Hi, honeys. It's Michelle. I am doing my first book vlog on this channel, and hopefully it goes good. <laughs> what I'm going to be reading is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I'm very excited to read this book. So this was a gift from another booktuber who's one of my favorite booktubers. Um, I did not want to mention her name because I'm not sure. She seems kind of private. So and, until she tells me to go ahead and mention who she is, um, I'm not going to. Of course, I don't think she watches my videos. She's kind of bigger. <laughs> Probably doesn't have time. But... Um, she sent this to me as a birthday gift uh, after I had mentioned to her that we were born a couple days apart. And it's very rare to meet other Geminis that were born at the end of May as opposed to in June. And so she wanted to see my wish list and she ended up sending me this book, which is so wonderful. I'm very grateful and it's just such a sweet gesture. Uh, but this this book is about a girl named Nora and Nora has a life of misery and regret sorry about that background noise there's a lady named Nora who has been living a life of misery and regret and she feels that she's let everyone down including herself she finds herself in the midnight library and has a chance to make things right these books in the library enable her to live as if she's done things differently and with each each book, there's a different life and her actions or other people's actions have different outcomes. Doesn't that just sound awesome? Like to me, that's almost part of why I read is I feel like I get to live other lives or other scenarios. Um, but I also feel like, and maybe, I don't know, but I'm kind of wondering if at the end of the book, I, I heard somebody said something that really kind of hit me the other day. It's like on a TV show and they said, stop worrying about what was supposed to happen because if it was supposed to happen, it would have. And it's like, right, right. Because when things that we want to have happen, happen, we don't think that was supposed to happen. We just accept it for what it is because it's what we wanted. But thinking that maybe things shouldn't have happened or weren't supposed to happen. It just kind of brings about more peace and more of an ability to just kind of let go with all the things that maybe weren't what we thought they should be. I'm kind of hoping that that's what she decides at the end of the book. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every decision she regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life. But things aren't always what she'd imagined they'd be. And soon, she, her choices place the library and herself in extreme danger. Wow. Okay, so that was something I, I didn't notice when I read the synopsis before. Before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question, what is the best way to live? How exciting. This book just sounds amazing. And I, I did look up uh, some of the reviews and it looks like people are loving the book and here's what the book looks like under the jacket just in case you're like me and that's super important to you <laughs> this book is let's see one more thing here two hundred and eighty eight pages and I'm really excited to start it. That's why I'm talking to you right now. I didn't get all set up and I um, didn't bother with all the stuff I normally do. But I'm in the middle of my work day. I have a little bit of a break in between calls. And I thought, I'm just going just gonna to start this now. I'm going to start it here. I think that's part of the fun with vlogs is we get to see what people's lives are, are really like when they're not sitting in their little recording space and just gonna slide this jacket over here where it won't get hurt do you do that do you put your jackets in like a specified safe spot <laughs> I wanted to update you I'm like five pages into the book okay but I already love it I love the way 
the author writes, which that is usually a good way to get me. Like with a little bit of like sarcastic humor. I just love that. And I really, being an American, I love books that don't take place in America. Like I want to go outside of my comfort zone. I want to learn about different cultures, different ethnicities, different ways of life. You know, like I want to know what it's like to be a 90 year old man living in Belize or something. <laughs> and so when I started reading this book, they mentioned Bedfordshire and I thought, oh, is this England? And then they said, when, when he wrote the word organize, it had an S instead of a Z. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I think, I think this is in England, which I love. I'm just so excited to read a book that's in a different country, different culture, different world. Even, even though there's probably um, some similarities between America and England, there's some new nuances that are different, you know, some undertones that are different, some cultural differences. So I'm, I'm excited to, to read it even more now. So I can't wait to go to bed tonight because that's when I'll finally be able to read more of the book. But unfortunately, my day has just been so jam-packed. I don't have time to read, which I hate. I just want to read. I just heard Here I Go Again by White Snake on the radio and, um, Tani Katane, may you rest in peace. Every time <laughs> I keep thinking about her, ever since I found out that she passed away, it's like I can't believe that this like sex symbol from the 80s that I used to wish I could be her and look like her and dance like her on cars. <laughs> I she she's gone and she's so young and like uh, anyway. I just, over the years, watched her on different shows. I liked her on Celebrity Rehab. I, um, and let's be honest, she's probably one of the most beautiful women of, at least in my lifetime, I think she's one of the most beautiful women. Uh, so, anyway, not that that matters. Like, I know there's a lot more to life than looks, but wow, she was just gorgeous. Just a naturally beautiful person. And I don't know, I watched a lot of interviews with her over the years and she just seemed like she'd be a nice friend to have or a neat person to know. Who knows what she was like in real life? <laughs> I mean, I've read some things that maybe she's got a temper, but so do I. So, you know, it's, there, it's weird. There's certain celebrities that pass away and it's like kind of hits you hard. And for me, it bothered me when she passed away. And other ones, it's like, oh, that's sad. But like, you just kind of move on. But this one... I, you know, I think about it a lot. It's just like, oh, not Tawny. <laughs> She's finally getting her life, like, get, you know, because you really can't blame her. If you look at the life that she led, starting dating famous musicians as a teenager, <laughs> it's no wonder that she didn't start doing drugs at a young age. Like, she was in that world. Like, that was what they did in the 80s, you know, and... Um, so I, I don't have any judgment towards her. I don't I don't have any judgment towards a lot of people, most people. But yeah, it's just sad to me. It's like she really finally got clean and then she passes away and they don't know a cause of death yet. Anyway, oh, this is depressing. Let's move on. <laughs> so I read up to page sixty as of as of last night. I haven't read yet today. I've been Go, 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 go all day again. That's the exhausting part. Trying to get used to having to constantly move and go and work. And it's like, whoa, okay. I got, I got kind of used to not doing a lot. <laughs> so I'm 60 pages in. There's really nothing I can say that would probably, that would probably be a spoiler. But she, so the main character, Nora, she gets to this library and this librarian pulls out this huge tome of a book. And it's so big, she can't carry it on her own. She needs help. She can't even open it on her own without being told that it's time, being told that she can't open it. And it ends up being a book of her regrets. And it's everything that she's regretted throughout her entire life. 
every little thing, like, oh, I, sh I shouldn't have turned back there. I made a mistake. Whoops. Oh, I shouldn't have left my ex or, you know, whatever. I mean, we all have thought after thought after thought that are regrets every day of our lives. And it really got me thinking about regrets and how we do. We, we carry so many regrets on our backs that we're weighing ourselves down. And what is the point, really? I mean, if, if things were supposed to happen differently, they probably would have happened differently. And at least that's what I believe. So it just really kind of got me thinking, which I love books that have me thinking about what does it all mean and what does it not mean and that kind of thing. As far as I've got, she read the first book. She went through, as, as I told you about the synopsis, she went through the first life of what would have happened if I made this decision differently. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do you see that cute dog? There he is. <laughs> Smiling of a storm. <laughs> I miss having a dog. Dogs are the best, aren't they? So, <laughs> so it's a uh, Friday night. We're going to bed early because we had, we both, Brad and I both had a really exhausting week. Marty's tired. He only slept an average of 16 hours a day this week as opposed to 18. So yes, there's a bunch of clothes piled up behind me and that's, if you see the little lit screen in the corner, that's Brad playing a game on his phone. <laughs> I wanted to let you know how the book is coming. Let's see, I am on page 110. 110. I had a hard time putting it down last night. It gave me some insomnia. At this point, it kind of feels like Hey, I'm talking on the screen, Marty. You're not supposed to steal the screen from me. He doesn't care. <laughs> At this point, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of like a Christmas story meets Alice in Wonderland meets Sophie's World. It feels like a Christmas story because it's like a look back on your life and what would have happened if you'd made different decisions, that kind of thing. It's like Alice in Wonderland because in a way it kind of feels like creating a world of one's own, being able to see what would have happened if, you, if one made different decisions. And it's like Sophie's World, which if you're not familiar with what that is, watch my video where I talk about books that changed my life. I'll link it down here or up here, wherever it goes. I don't know. <laughs> I'll put a tag for it and you can see what Sophie's World is. But basically it's a book about, um, it's a very elementary way of describing the great philosophical thinkers and what they believed. And this book is, it's very philo philosophical but very kind of creative and lighthearted and a very interesting take at the look of one's life is really fascinating. I think, I think you should read it. I think anybody would like it. What do you think? Marty was pretty into it last night. His fur's all over the book. I think he's looking at himself on the camera and that's why it looks like he's looking off to the side. <laughs>
guess who just finished their book? I did. <laughs> I know, it sounds silly to be so excited about finishing a book, but I was reading all morning. Like, hours it took me. I don't, when I read books, I savor them. I don't speed read or anything. Like, I really take the time to enjoy them. So it takes me a while to read stuff, <laughs> which is probably why I don't read 12 books a month. So this book was so good, you guys. I, I think literally everyone should read it, every single person. Maybe it should be required reading like senior year of high school or in college or something. I thought it was that good. It's just a really beautiful adventure. It's got a lot of philosophy in it, and I just loved it. I hope they make it into a movie, even. So I give it five stars because of that. So after you last saw me, I just read for even longer. I had some music on, um, on the record player that I have here next to me, and it was just a, a really lovely, relaxing morning. Zelda got up here with me on the Papa's on and cuddled with me and she had her arms wrapped around my leg and it was kind of funny. I made grilled cheese sandwiches and uh, SpaghettiOs for lunch, except it was not SpaghettiOs. It's like Annie's stars or something. <laughs> there was a life that I hoped that she would choose from the beginning of the book and she did have a, a life along the way that was really similar and it was fun to experience that life with her. It was fun to experience all the different lives that or all the different each each book that she read in the library was a life and it was really fascinating to read so many of them along with her and experience those with her. One thing I got to thinking about with this was what do you think would be Something that would stay the same in your life throughout each life. Like if, let's just say, hypothetically, there are a bunch of different lives that you could live or maybe you're living in other dimensions right now. Is there anything about you that you think would be the same in every life? Like that was something that I thought was really fascinating. And for me, I was kind of thinking, I wonder if I would have the same books on my nightstand. I think I would in every life. Maybe not, though. What if there's a life, like if there are other dimensions, what if there's a life where I don't even read at all? Ah, that's a scary thought, right? <laughs> it's something I love so much, but there might be this horribly depressed, angry Michelle somewhere in another dimension that has never read a book and hates her life. I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting to think of. I do want to know. If you've made it this far, I want to know you made it this far. And what I want you to tell me is, what books do you have near your bed? On your on your nightstand or a shelf near your bed or whatever. What do you have right near your bed? Um, I'll let you know mine. On my nightstand, I always have two books. I always have my Bible and whatever book I'm currently reading, which is probably kind of boring. I have a feeling there might be a few people that don't like the ending of this book. I personally love it because I feel like it fits the theme of the book. It's what the ending should be. And I'm not going to say anything else because I want you to read the book. I don't want to spoil anything. As you see, I am a human being and I do have uh, a bunch of dishes behind me on the counter here that I need to go attend to. So with that in mind, I'm going to wrap up this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night. I hope you're having a relaxing Sunday like I am. I love you. Bye.